Now, the listener, Chef Dale Pinnock is with us to answer your questions on how food can be as good as medicine. Now, Dale, lots, as you can see, lots of questions <laughs> coming in yeah. for you. Uh, as we said earlier on, we just mentioned Fiona there. She said, I, want, I would like to know if eating cheese before bedtime gives you nightmares. It's actually an old wives' tale. Is yeah, it? there's actually no evidence there whatsoever. And do you think cheese is good before bed or would you avoid it? I would avoid eating too much um, before bed. Um, obviously, something light is absolutely fine, like some of the things that we went through earlier, but like anything that's too heavy... Okay, not a good idea. Nice a little bit of cheese, no issue. And I actually did that experiment. I had a great big block and nothing happened. Okay, <laughs> so no <laughs> Just uh, touching on, just in case some of our viewers actually missed what we were chatting about mm. earlier on, uh, foods <laughs> which contain tryptophan like bananas and turkey. Bananas, turkey, tuna, any of those kind of things because they're the precursor to serotonin, which kind of sets the clock. Yeah, and Dale made a beautiful recipe as well of actually dozy chocolate, which contains, what did it contain and again? Valerian and lavender essential oil. Yeah, we have all that on the website. <laughs> Mary Parker got in touch as well. She left a message for us. I'm having a hard time with my sleeping pattern at night before and when I'm sleeping. I fall asleep when I go to bed, but I wake at 4 and 5 a.m. So what foods would help me uh, to get a good night's sleep and not wake up during the night? Well, I'm actually going to move away from foods for a second. There's a herb, Okay. a really, really useful herb called Skullcap. I've heard one of, of my absolute favourites. It's wonderful for for people that find that they you know they kind of get get to sleep, but then after a few hours they wake up and their minds yeah. racing over and over and over and over again. Really quietens the mind down, but can just help you to sort of sleep to all the way through. To yeah, it's got some. And you can get that in the health shop. Yeah, any health shop. Okay, very good. Uh, who else do we have here? We have some people getting in touch with us uh, on um, painful joints. Margaret Monaghan. She has osteoarthritis. Um, in her hands, they're swollen and painful. Could Dale suggest any food that would help her? She's in her 60s. Absolutely. I mean, this is something I can relate to. I've actually got it myself. I've got it in my right knee following okay. a cycling injury. So, you know, I know what it's like, especially this time of year, can flare up. There's, there's a lot of foods that can be useful. Pineapple's wonderful. It contains a, an enzyme called bromelain, which is anti-inflammatory. Ginger. Ginger. Another wonderful one. Again, the, the oils in there that give it the spicy flavour, that interrupts different elements of the inflammatory okay. response. That, what about garlic? Um, it's got some mild anti-inflammatory properties, but you actually need to use it raw to get the anti-inflammatory benefits. But okay. then there's supplements, things like glucosamine as well, that can actually help to, to layer up the cartilage, okay. you know, thicken the cartilage. When you're eating ginger, how would you make that? With some honey, or what do you think is the best way? It's great in juices. Uh, you can throw it into things like soups. You can even grate it and just put some hot water over it. And, and make a tea it. out of it, yeah. Although, to be fair, that's probably better for digestive issues. Okay. What about coming into this time of the year? A lot of people are worried about colds and flus. Any, any of the... Garlic is a real magic yeah. bullet there. Those volatile oils in there, the things that kind of stay on your breath for a week after you've yeah. been out for dinner, okay, okay, those are key to its activity. What those oils do, as they move through your respiratory tract, as okay. you breathe them out, basically, any viruses and bugs that are stuck to the mucous membranes in there okay. can actually wipe them out. Really? Yeah, yeah. Also quite good for um, enhancing circulation as well. Very good. So you think raw garlic or garlic? Um, in that context, you can have it cooked. As long as you can still smell the oils, then it's still going to have that okay. activity. How do you feel about garlic capsules? Do you think it's better eaten in its It depends. If, it, well, if you were going for the odourless ones, for example, that would have the benefits associated with heart health but it wouldn't actually have the effect on the immune system. Okay. I just want to mention, we mentioned the tomatoes, uh, cooked versus uh, raw tomatoes, and mm. it's uh, lycopene, is that the...? L well, that's, that's one of the things that's been the focus of a lot of research. It's a very, very powerful carotenoid. It's a colour pigment. It's responsible for that okay. deep red colour. Why are they better cooked? It's, it's not a case that they're better. It's because when you cook it, obviously you think about, well, there's maybe, what, two or three tomatoes in there? There's probably about 15 or 20 in there because okay. they're all cooked down, they're reduced. It's more concentrated. So you're getting more in a smaller, smaller portion. But is more lycopene released as the fruit or as the veg has been cooked? Well, it, it does make it slightly more bioavailable. Okay. And um, we have uh, Mary in Mallow. She has a daughter. She's 38 years old. She suffers from a hernia and an inflamed bowel. Mm. What foods would help her? Um, with the inflammatory stuff, omega-3, really, really important. So... Um, Flax seeds? Oily fish. Flax seeds, because of the, the seeds, because they're quite grainy, they may actually irritate an inflamed bowel. So keep things nice and simple. So oily fish, lots of greens, lots of brightly coloured okay. fruits and vegetables, because they will help to control the information, inflammation. The key is keeping it simple, not having uh, meals that are too complex, so the digestive tract doesn't have to work too hard. Okay. Anne and Ennis has fibromyalgia. Is there any food Dale could suggest that would help her? Again, um, inflammation, isn't it? With it is. It's, it's inflammation at the neuromuscular junction where the nerve actually um, attaches to the muscles. 
some, a lot of data actually about magnesium actually helping to relieve it. So lots Mineral. of dark green leafy vegetables, cashew nuts, pumpkin seeds, things like that, even looking towards supplements as very well. Very good. Thank you very much, Dale. So it's many pleasure. more questions, unfortunately, we can't get through them all. But all of Dale's information and the great recipes that we cooked earlier on, they're all on the website and on the Airtel page. And that is 3.40. I shall see you soon, Dale. Thank you Absolutely. very much.